There's something about dinosaurs that captures the imagination. Giant, mysterious animals that roamed the earth for millions of years, now gone forever. All they've left us are their fossils, the dried out mineral remnants of the creatures they once were, with the organic material that gave them life long gone, or so everyone always thought. That is until B. rex, a 68 million year old Tyrannosaurus rex who was dug up and named by a paleontologist from Montana State University, who, as Leslie Stahl discovered, has an unorthodox approach to dinosaurs, which may be changing the whole dino ball game. The story will continue in a moment. Think dinosaur, and most of us think this. The 1993 classic film Jurassic Park, with its dinosaur resurrection experiment gone wrong, and its embattled hero, famed paleontologist Alan Grant. You consulted on that movie. I did consult on the, all and those movies. And they said the, the guy Alan Grant was you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, fortunately, he didn't get eaten. <laughs> <laughs> Meet Jack Horner, the real-life Alan Grant. He's one of the most prominent and controversial paleontologists in the country, a dyslexic MacArthur Foundation genius who never finished college and who says he doesn't care why dinosaurs went extinct. To him, the important part is how they lived. I'm trying to figure out the biology of, of dinosaurs and what they were like as living creatures. You want to know what their behavior was, how they treated their young. I want to know everything we can know about them and make one if we can. Make a dinosaur? The things Jack Horner says make him a maverick. But the finds he's made, including more T-Rexes than anyone else in the world, make him a legend. See if you can tell me what these are. Oh my gosh. Are these teeth? Yes. Look at that. And not just any teeth, the teeth of the oldest T-Rex ever found. This little pocket right here in the teeth yeah. is where the next tooth sits. Dinosaurs replaced their teeth throughout their life, and oh. T-Rex replaced it all of their teeth every year. Here you can see the jaw. But Horner is most famous for discovering a kinder, gentler side of dinosaurs. You like that? Yeah. Here in the Badlands of Montana, he and his team uncovered the first dinosaur nesting ground in the world, a vast landscape of eggs, nests, and babies that helped change our image of dinosaurs. Thanks to Horner's influence, Jurassic Park showed that most dinosaurs were social animals who lived in colonies, and he's found evidence they actually cared for their young. This is the tibia, the shin bone, right? and this is a little less than a month old. But And here, here is the same bone. <gasps> of an adult? Of a one-year-old. A one-year-old. <laughs> Horner figured out that such rapidly growing baby dinosaurs couldn't walk at first, meaning that their parents were bringing food back to them in the nest, like birds. His discoveries lent support to a then controversial, but now widely accepted theory that dinosaurs actually gave rise to modern birds. If a little kid today studies all this in school, Mm -hmm. and they look up in the sky and see a bird and turn to mom and say, you know, that's a dinosaur. They're right. They're right. They're right. Jack Horner told us that birds are dinosaurs. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Sean Carroll is a professor of molecular biology and genetics at the University of Wisconsin. So really dinosaurs never went extinct. Dinosaurs never went extinct, but we all think they did. And there was an asteroid event that took out a lot of life on Earth, including T-Rex and all the most famous dinosaurs. But this other group, uh, what we call birds, made it through. And of course, there's thousands of species of birds still around today. The dinosaur-bird connection is largely settled now. But that hasn't stopped Horner from using unusual means to make unusual discoveries. And he's found the perfect partner in his protege, Mary Schweitzer, a professor at North Carolina State University, who studies the internal makeup of ancient bone. She let us in on the paleontologist's trick for telling dinosaur bone from rock. You don't just look at it. Touch your tongue to that. She actually wanted me to lick it. 
It's supposed to stick like Velcro. Oh, oh, <laughs> it did. That's that bone. Mean? That's how you can tell. Yeah, because the bone is filled with, with little capillaries. And when you put your tongue on it, the moisture from your tongue sucks up the capillaries. This is 80 sticks. million years old and it can do that? Yeah. Oh my God. Rocks don't do that. The tricky thing about Schweitz's work is that she needs to get her hands on the insides of dinosaur bones, which means literally breaking right the bones apart mm. and sometimes dissolving pieces of them in acid. Most paleontologists won't let her near their precious finds. Jack is the only paleontologist out there who lets me dissolve his dinosaurs. Dissolve his dinosaurs? <laughs> yes. You mean ruin them? Isn't that considered a little sacrilegious to take yes. one of these precious artifacts, fossils that have been in the ground for 68 million years and pff, crack it in half? We found the first dinosaur embryos, the first babies inside of eggs. And that was just from breaking eggs open and looking inside. I mean, people had always thought that eggs were so precious, they didn't want to break them and look inside. And yet, they're like presents. You know, I mean, it's like having a Christmas present and never unwrapping it. <laughs> Did you ever, though, have a moment where it was kind of heartbreaking? I'm no. destroying, never. No, well, glue is cheap. Horner's practice of breaking dinosaur bones apart and sending the insides to Mary Schweitzer has landed the two of them at the center of one of the biggest controversies paleontology has seen in years. It started back in 2000 with a series of coincidences. A member of Jack's team, Bob Harmon, wandered away from a dig site one day to eat lunch and noticed a small piece of bone sticking out of the side of a 50-foot cliff. I could tell pretty much what it was from where I was sitting. That it was a T-Rex metatarsal. How was it sticking out? You mean it was the side, here's a cliff, and it was like a little jutting out? Yep, exactly. He got a folding chair, and he stacked it on these rocks right there. And you can see that this is on the sheer side hill of a cliff. Here he this is not possible. No, is he attached to anything? No, he's not. That's Bob. Jack named the T-Rex B-Rex in Bob's honor and made the decision to dig it out. But this was under 50 feet of rock. I mean, this was in a terrible place. There was no road to it. There was no access to it. And so for the next three summers, we sent out climbing crews, people that could repel down cliffs with jackhammers. I mean, it was a horrendous undertaking. The site was so remote that bones had to be lifted out by helicopter. But the giant cast containing B. rex's thigh bones was too heavy. The chopper couldn't get it off the ground. So after all that excavating, Jack gave the order to cut one of B. rex's femurs in two. Now that was heartbreaking. No, well, not really. I mean, get a chance to see inside. He shipped the bone fragments that fell out to Mary Schweitzer. So the first piece I pulled out, I picked it up and I looked at it and I said, it's a girl and it's pregnant. That's the first time, as I understand it, that anyone had ever been able to Sex identify gender yeah. in any dinosaur. Yes. Mary recognized a specific type of bone called medullary bone, which female birds produce when they're about to lay eggs. No one had ever found it before in a dinosaur. It was yet another link to birds, and it meant that B. rex was definitely no bob. So she calls you up and she, she says... calls up and says, we have med medullary bone. Oh, now this had to be thrilling. Yes, very. very exciting. And that wasn't all. What happened next happened by mistake. Mary put some fragments of the bone in acid to dissolve away the outermost layer of mineral. But the acid worked too fast and all the mineral dissolved away. Being a fossil, there should have been nothing left. But there was and it was elastic, like living tissue. This is the piece. <gasps> no. She showed us video she took under the microscope. That's really what happened? Yes. That's the dinosaur yeah. bone? Without mineral now. That's what was left. It looked like the soft tissue she would have expected to find if it had been modern bone. This was impossible. This bone was 68 million years old. So you see this and you think, what? You say, I didn't you want say, to tell anybody. <laughs> You'd be ridiculed, yes. right? And so I, I said to my technician, okay, do it again. I don't believe it. And yet, in sample after sample, they were there. Things that looked suspiciously like flexible, transparent blood vessels. 
she finally mustered the courage to tell Jack. She said she dissolved the bone away and there were blood vessels. And, you know, I was like shocked. I mean, how could that be? How could that be? That's right. The things Mary was finding inside dinosaur bones. Look at that. Blood vessels and even what seemed to be intact cells pose a radical challenge to the existing rules of science that organic material can't possibly survive even a million years, let alone 68 million. Mary, Jack, and their team published their B-Rex findings in a series of papers in the journal Science and were promptly attacked. Critics said their samples might have been contaminated or that the supposed blood vessels were actually something called biofilm, a type of slime. But as Mary showed us, she's been able to replicate her findings. These are pieces of an even older dinosaur, a well-preserved 80-million-year-old duckbill. When she dissolved it away in acid... Let's put this under the scope here. Well, look. Is that a blood vessel? This is a blood vessel. You're you see the branches right there? And look at all of them. And it's so consistent over and over and over again. We do this bone and it comes out and I get excited every time. I can't help it. I mean... 80 million years old. Mary published her new results last year, and while some of her critics have been swayed, the controversy still rages, and the stakes are high. If blood vessels can survive 80 million years, what about DNA? Jack Horner is looking. His crews are now wearing surgical gloves, unheard of in the world of paleontology, where no one used to worry about getting skin cells, sweat, even an occasional spilled beer on fossils. Jack is skeptical that the full dinosaur DNA sequence will ever be found. But that hasn't stopped him. He's come up with a whole new idea for his dream of making a dinosaur. The best way is just to use a modern dinosaur, the chicken. Because evolution works, birds are actually carrying ancestral DNA. Horner has written a book proposing a plan to mine that ancestral DNA as a way to reverse engineer a chicken into what he calls a dino chicken. It may seem improbable that this is carrying DNA from something like this. But when you think about it, birds, like the dinosaurs they evolved from, still walk on hind legs. Most have three toes pointing forward with one in the back, and they even all have wishbones. As for dinosaur features you don't see in modern chickens, like long tails, Horner's contention is they can be brought back, since you can still see them in embryos as little chicks grow. As the chicken embryo develops, it does develop a fairly long tail before a gene kicks on and destroys it. So if we can stop that gene, we theoretically can get a chicken to hatch out with a relatively long tail. So you're not saying actually change the gene. Just switching a gene on or switching a gene off. He says picture a chicken with a long tail, teeth, and little claw-like hands instead of wings. So maybe there will be a dino chicken. I'm sure there'll be a dino chicken. You're sure there'll be a dino chicken? I think we'll be able to make a dino chicken within the next five years. Boy, I see a new movie coming out uh -oh. of this. <laughs> this time I could get eaten. <laughs> Go to 60minutesovertime.com to get the stories behind our favorite stories. Sponsored by Pfizer.